Your turn to attend the day camp. Everybody get that? Okay. Uh, we've got four chapters of God's pronouncements against Egypt. Chapter 30 is the second one. We do not have a date for chapter 30. Some people think, think it follows right after the end of the previous chapter with the last four verses, which were in 571 B.C., which makes it among the last letters. Other people think that it goes back to chapter 29, verse 1, about 16 years earlier than that, but we don't know. But anyway, Ezekiel has this to say, we're going to have another funeral service of romance. Everybody gets a lament. The word of the Lord came to me, came again to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus says the Lord God, Well, alas for the day, for the day is near. Even the day of the Lord is near. It will be a day of clouds, a day of great calamity, uh, a time of doom for the nation. A sword will come upon Egypt, and anguish will be in Ethiopia. When, a, when the slain fall in Egypt, they take away her wealth, and her foundations are torn down. Ethiopia, foot, blood, and all Arabia, or mixed company, I think King James and New King James have that. Uh, Libya and the people of the land that is in the league will fall with them by the sword. Now, this day of the Lord down in verse 3, somebody want to venture a guess what we almost always run into when we have that phrase? Good. Good. Uh, it is a time when God has decided that it's time to get involved in what's going on in this little planet among his people and among those who are not his people too. But he has deemed that the time has come for me to intervene and it's called the day of the Lord. Uh, and it's the judgment is why the term we've got, alas, uh, the day of the Lord. Okay. <clears throat> But you've, uh, you remember that both Israel and Judah have already experienced their day of the Lord and the judgment, which is, uh, depending on your date, uh, either shortly to come or has already come when uh, Judah was destroyed and Jerusalem was destroyed also. Uh, so now God's judgment is going to come upon Egypt. Do you have something? Yes. Uh, number three. It, say, it says, it will be a day of clouds, great planting. The New King James says, the time of Gentiles. Now, how do we compare it? What's going on here? I don't, I don't see. Probably the next part of the for the nations, because the nation is usually the first of the Gentiles. I didn't hear what the New King James said. I didn't King James says uh, the day of uh, Gentiles. The time, the, the time of the Gentiles instead of the it will be a day of clouds or great clamor. No, Well, does yours not have doom in there? No. 
just had a shot to do. A time with the nations. Make sure we're on the same track.
there are a lot of questions about the correct translations in verse 5. So if you don't agree, that's fine. <coughs> Ethiopia? Now that one's not subject to disagreement. We know where that is. Put? which is located west of Egypt, still is. Uh, Lud, which is in the Bolivians. Let me go up here. Okay, we've done this before, but we're going to have to move again. There's Kush. Libya, right up there, called A-U-T. Lud. There's a little bit up here, and there's a little down here. And the scholars will, will tell you most of them that are honest, that they don't know which it is, so they'll say it's either one or both of these places. And so I have the same thing on the other map. I'm talking about the Green Arrow. It's either northern Africa or over in the western uh, Asia, Asia Minor. Where the seven churches of Asia of Revelation are located. But, but since it's all the other ones are in the general vicinity of Egypt and its neighbors, that they kind of leave that one. Yes. You would think they would leave that one. Yes. 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 Uh, let's see what else we got. Oh, all Arabia. Well, if that's correct, then it would include not all of this down here. Generally, it's just the areas that are. Occupied by Bedouins, which are traveling Arabian families or groups who live in tents. And uh, uh, the alternate translation is mixed company. Let me get back up there. Uh, oh, how about Libya? Oh, about all the way. Or, I think the King James and Libya James have mainly with people. There's one letter difference between the two words in Hebrew. And some scholars have admitted they're not sure which work is correct. Some script manuscripts have one, the other one has the other. And so as a translator, you've got to make a decision which word or form of this word has the better case. And guess what? Sometimes translators don't agree. So I looked it up in the Hebrew, and I, I don't read Hebrew. I just looked it up in the English what's the word, transliteration, and they are one letter apart. Uh, the Libya here, it's hard to make sense without foot is Libya, another name for Libya. So, I think the King James and the New King James have chub. I've seen cub, C-U-B. Yes, and we don't know where it is. We don't know where it is. Probably in the area somewhere that we've been talking about. It really doesn't matter. It's no, it's just they're all the fault. Yes, yes. The whole region. Uh, and then, and the people of the land, that phrase is also up for debate because, uh, let me see, some translations have the people of the uh, covenant. Here we are. Uh, those who, let's see, we get. People of the land that is in league. Oh, I found three translations with the people of the covenant land. And the phrase can be translated either way. If it's people of the covenant land, it's Jews who are living in Egypt. Probably. All right? If it's people of the land that is in league, as mine has, it's the allies of Egypt. Yes. Who are allies? I agree. So, all with them and by themselves. Yes, I think that makes more sense than bringing in a few Jews who have traveled down to Alexandria and settled. And uh, but anyway, the, all those people will fall with them the Egyptians by the sword. And don't get discouraged because not all of the verses are that difficult. But Ezekiel has his share of difficult verses. Verse 6, thus says the Lord, indeed, indeed, those who support Egypt and 
And that's the one reason I went back to verse 5 as being allied. Because the thought is picked up right afterwards by saying, and those, indeed, those who support Egypt will fall, and the pride of her power will come down from Nikdal to Saini. They will fall within her by the sword, declares the Lord God. They will be desolate in the midst of the desolated lands, and her cities will be in the midst of the devastated cities. And they will know that I am the Lord, a phrase which we have seen over and over throughout the book. And all of her helpers, that is her aides or allies, are broken. On that day, messengers will go forth from me, that's Yahweh, in ships to frighten security Ethiopia, and anguish will be on them as on the day of Egypt, for behold, if, that is, the day of the Lord of judgment is coming. All right, we talked about Nikdal to Sain in verse 6. Nikdal, way up there on the top, Sain down here, modern, that's fine, where that famous dam is located. I think I already mentioned that before. It is the equivalent of saying from the extreme north to the extreme south or the entire country. In uh, verse 7, they will be desolate. All of those who were mentioned before in verse 5, Libya, Lewis, Cook, Arabia, Ethiopia, and so on. Uh, let's see. They will be desolate in the midst of desolated lands. And that means the cities were to share with the same fate as other cities share in the midst of other devastated cities. Uh, and why are these people getting it? Because they had sided with Egypt against Nebuchadnezzar. And when you choose the losing side, you share the fate of the one you chose to fight with. And that's what's happening to all these people that we've been mentioning tonight. Uh, messengers, probably Egyptians perhaps, leaving the low delta area going down the uh, Nile River with the tidings of what has happened up the Nile River, or actually down the Nile River to the delta. Uh, and it's probably the Egyptians who are running for their lives from Nebuchadnezzar when he invades Egypt. And he says these sh ships in verse 9, uh, no, wait a minute, verse 9, uh, he talks about, uh, let's see, messengers will go forth from me to frighten secure Ethiopia. Some translations I found that will give you the idea of how Ethiopia viewed the threat Besides the uh, secure translation that mine has, others had careless, confident, or unsuspecting. In other words, she wasn't looking for any threat from Nebuchadnezzar to come her way at all. At all. Out of her complacency. Complacency. Okay, that's another good one. Okay. Uh, so they will be terrified when they hear what happened to their northern neighbor. And he says, these messengers will go forth from me. The Lord says, I'm going to send them, these messengers, myself, in a sense, to make sure that they get the message that they are next, and they were, uh, because he's going to carry out his judgment on them. Uh, and of course, the quickest way to go from the Delta down south is a ship. It's upstream, but at least you don't have to travel through the desert. By the way, that reminds me, my good friend Scott Hawkins, who usually sits right over there, but he's not in the accent. He's sitting on the beach. He's sitting on the beach. I hate it. Remember we talked about the continent of Africa, and the top third of it was desert. He did a little figuring with a map program where you drag and it'll change the distance between the two points from the Mediterranean Sea to the southern extent of the Sahara Desert was 2,000 miles. That is a lot of sand. 
2,000 miles of the northern part of Africa is nothing but barren sand, except right along the sea coast. Yes, you are. So it would be easier to do that. Not that much, though, but you can. Yes. Oh, yes. Toward the equator, there's more rain. That's true. That's true. That's where the jungles are our case. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Verse 9. As on the day of Egypt, he's talking about just like the judgment day that's coming upon Egypt, the day of the Lord on her is also coming on her southern neighbor, Cush, or Ethiopia. Uh, verse 10. Thus says the Lord, I will also make the hordes of Egypt cease. And now he tells us how he's going to bring this all about. By the hand of Nebuchadnezzar in the battle. He and his people with him, the most ruthless of the nations, will be brought in to destroy the land and they will draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. Moreover, I will make the Nile canals dry and sell the land into the hands of evil men, and I will make it desolate that all and all that is in it by the hand of strangers, the Babylonians, I, the Lord, have spoken. Uh, he's going to, in verse 12, he talks about making the uh, Nile canals dry. I'm not sure that's to be taken literally. It probably means I'm going to take uh, away from Egypt what made her prosperous, prosperous and a great nation. In the last chapter, the king had said, The Nile is mine, I made it. Yes, yes. So all the various things to say, yes. Then he says, I'm going to sell the land in verse 12. That is, I'm going to give it up entirely. Uh, he's transferring possession of the land from Egypt to Babylon. I don't know how much money he got for it, but he's going to sell it anyway. Stop me, I'm going too fast. Verse 13. Thus says the Lord, I will also destroy the idols and make the images cease from Memphis, and we will look at these locations. There will no, and there will no longer be a prince or royalty to lead in the land of Egypt. I will put fear in the land of Egypt. I will make Petros desolate. I will set a fire in Zoan and execute judgments on thieves. I will pour out my wrath on sin, and that's not, that's the that's a capital S. Uh, the stronghold of Egypt, I will also cut off the hordes of Thebes. I will set a fire in Egypt. Sin will writhe in anguish. Thebes will be breached. And Memphis will have distresses daily. The young men of On and of Pi and Bessa will fall by the sword. And the women, or cities, will go into captivity. And the uh, Hopanese, the day will be dark when I break the yoke bars of Egypt. Then the pride of her power will cease in her, a cloud will cover her, and her daughters will go into captivity. <coughs> that is repeated from the previous chapter, 29, that they're going to be desolate for 40 years and go into captivity. Thus I will educate, uh, excuse me, execute judgments on Egypt, and they will know that I am the Lord. And the reason he goes through the naming all of these cities is to make what point? Everywhere. Everywhere. It's going to be universal within the land. He names, he names the big cities and how to say the whole. Yes. Yes. Uh, Area, yeah. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, 
city you're at. Oh, Memphis. Yeah. That is where we've got 
the governor that Harkins put in and that they murdered him. That's, that's, where, they fled to. that's where the Jews fled after Gedalia was killed. Uh, that was after Babylonia, or not Babylonia, uh, made him governor. Yes. And then some of his Jewish enemies killed him. Uh, all right. We will pick up in verse uh, 20. And uh, about one minute, I want to impress on some. When you read these years by verse 20, in the 11th year, in the first month, on the seventh of the month, first in the 11th year means it's been 11 years since Jehoiachin was deported. It's been 11 years since Ezekiel was deported because he went with in the same group as Jehoiachin did after he was dethroned by Nebuchadnezzar. You remember Nebuchadnezzar then put in Jehoiachin's uncle, the last Jude, uh, king of Judah named Zedekiah. So when you see 11th year, you start with the year 597 and count back. 586. The first month in the Jewish calendar that's being used here is in March and April. They don't coincide with our 30 days. The first month is always in the spring. So this is in the spring of 597 when Jehoiachin was taken captive. And that's how long also that Ezekiel has been a captive. And that may make it easier for you to follow. But the starting date is 597 for either one. All right, let's pray. Father, as we leave tonight, we pray that your gracious presence will go with us, that we will try to exemplify Jesus in our lives and to understand your word and to be the kind of people you want us to be. Father, we look forward to heaven. Bless us as we keep going that way. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.